from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Friday, September 20th. Okay, so we have the moon in Aries energy pretty much taking us into wee hours of the day. We will see the moon go void, of course, at 4.39 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're shifting into Taurus energy at 5.03 a.m. So we always kind of slow the roll when the moon shifts into Taurus energy. We are definitely more present. We are more in our physical forms. We are a little bit more grounded, I would say. And we're trying to focus on the smaller things in our lives that make us feel safe and secure and happy and bring us a sense of joy and comfort. And so we are going to kind of slow our roll to smell the roses, so to speak, to really focus on all of the good things that are taking place. And it's going to give us an opportunity to kind of stand still while we take a good look around, really examine what it is that we need to adjust, what we need to change from here. So we have a little bit of an energy buildup. Let me also just reminder, still very much in this eclipse energy, but we're gaining closer and closer proximity to the equinox as well. The fact that this year the equinox is smack dab in the middle of these eclipses is no joke. OK, we're not going to see the actual consequences from this particular karmic balancing out, if you will, until post eclipse season. So we definitely have a lot of energy coming at us. And of course, we are nearing the final days of Virgo season. We are entering into that equinox energy still very much in this eclipse energy. And we will also be kind of watching Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure and money near the final degrees of her rulership in Libran energy. Because of course, if you have taken a listen to your September energy forecast, you would know that Venus actually moves out of her rulership on the exact same day that of course the sun moves into Libra season and she's gonna be moving into Scorpio energy. So again, listen to your zodiac forecast if you haven't already. You're definitely want, wanting to map out where these particular shifts are going to be taking place. We have a very important aspect popping off here today as well. We are going to have our second perfection of Saturn and Uranus kind of working together, if you will. We'll talk about that when we get to it. But that is a major, let's call it pivot point as well. And a reminder, we are still very much in a completion point, bringing certain chapters, certain topics and themes to an end to a close. So with all of that being said, it's a very busy day in the cosmos, 14 different aspects, nine of them are involving the moon. Okay, so the moon still in Aries energy, all fired up, all ready to go. The moon is going to be making a positive interaction with Mars, the god of war who rules over that Aries energy, who happens to be in cancer energy. So we're getting along with this particular aspect, even though the Aries energy wants us to move forward and the cancer energy wants us to stand still or at least look back. The reason why we're getting along with this energy is because Aries is a cardinal sign. Cancer energy, also a cardinal sign, meaning this is time to initiate a pivot point, a change in the path, in the direction that, of course, we've already been given information and details to support this particular pivot point. Emotionally speaking, we're getting inspired. We're getting a little bit, shall I say, excited or if excited is too much of a word, at least our interests are being piqued. We are starting to see where emotionally we do have options to stabilize our emotional realm. We do have the ability to make ourselves feel safe and secure in our present moment. And we're definitely going to be happy doubling down, betting on ourselves to provide ourselves with the creature comforts, the familiarity, the tried, tested, true ways of doing things is definitely going to help remind us where it is that we're coming from. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener, who of course is retrograde in Taurus energy. This is going to highlight for us where it is that emotionally speaking, each and every single day we are gaining closer, closer proximity to that pivot point where we are ready to make the changes in our physical realm that we have been resisting for many, many moons now. This is going to kind of spark a new level of interest, a new passion, a new inspiration, new motivation, new determination for us to tackle the issues in our physical realms, especially removing the particular aspects that are blocking this new path, this new direction. The moon in Aries is going to make a harsh interaction with the sun 
in Virgo energy. And of course, this doesn't feel good. What happens when we have a not so nice interaction between fire and earth? Something is burning up and burning down. And realistically, we always have a new level of awareness, emotionally speaking, between the moon and the sun interacting in such a way. The moon in this Aries energy giving us the spice, if you will. The warrior type of mood, the warrior type of attitude to do what we have to do to cut the cord with the past to actually initiate this new path, this new direction moving forward. The sun shining a bright light in the Virgo energy still focused on the actions that we have available to make in the present moment here and now that would provide us with a little bit of an improvement, a little bit of a positive adjustment. Again, we're trying to focus on the problematic areas of our lives and we're making small adjustments, small improvements in order to fix it, heal it, resolve it, repair it. So we're going to have an aha moment on what that could possibly be. The moon in this Aries energy going to make a positive interaction with Neptune, who of course is retrograde in Pisces energy, its rulership. And so the moon and Neptune coming together is kind of inspiring us, if you will, to kind of get a little bit more focused on our goal, on our vision, on where it is that we want to end up, on what the dream actually is. This is going to kind of refresh our soul and our spirit, really tap into a new creative energy as well to problem solve a lot of the areas in our lives that, again, have been holding us back. 3.06 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Saturn, the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles, responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, discipline, who is retrograde in Pisces energy, will be making a positive interaction with Uranus, the Great Awakener, who is retrograde in this Taurus energy. This is what I was talking about. The first time that we had these two come together in a positive way to give us a gentle nudge in the right direction was back in February. That was when we initially seen where it is that we had to start balancing out the old versus the new. We at that time still hadn't brought the new version of self online, wasn't anchored in. We kind of had a parameter of what that looked like. And we were in the thick of the tough love life lessons to become that new version of self. But we were very much rooted in the old version of self. So this time around, the new version of self is very much in control. But we're in a closure. We're in a, a completion series, which means that many of us are still living in the physical realm that the old version of self had created. We're wrapping things up. We're removing things. We're eliminating things. We're clearing the space, if you will, so that we could get started on these new wants, needs, and desires that this new version of self actually has. And so we're balancing the old versus the new. We are taking a calm, steady, confident approach to making the changes that we have available to us, especially removing some of the physical aspects, the physical structures, routines, relationships, past careers, resources that at one time we really wanted that now we're not so in touch with and now essentially is blocking us from the path that we need to blaze in a new path in a new direction moving forward. And so there is this calmness that we're learning to lean into not knowing where we're going from here. And there is this, you know, balance between doing what is old, tried, tested and true. Again, just leaning into the familiarity, the comfortability, if you will, of trying new things. We are rooted in the old ways of doing things, but progressively and we're kind of trying to innovate new ways of doing things. Now, this doesn't have to be on a large scale. Again, I'm going to give you this example. Many of us clean our houses in a, in a particular way. We start and we finish in the exact same way. And if you challenge yourself to even do it in reverse or to, you know, spice up the whole routine in its entirety, new neurons are popping off in your brain, right? We have to be challenging ourselves to learn new things. That's how we increase the electricity in our brain patterns, in our neural network. And that is how we reach new vibrations and frequencies. That's how we reach new levels of consciousness. You have to break the routine, the programming, the conditioning that our physical body is very comfortable in. And so, you know, it may be on a greater scale where we're starting to see these new chapters unfold, where we're starting to see the initial let's call it sprout of a new idea blossoming in front of us, but we are very reliant on sticking to what is tried, tested and true, providing us with the calmness, the steadiness, the let's call it encouragement 
while making the smaller adjustments to be better, to make those improvements, to try something new, to improve our physical form. So this is a very, very positive interaction. And the next one that we're going to have is actually in November. So this is kind of a long term transit, if you will. So that means that shortly thereafter, so that was 306 a.m., 439 a.m., the moon in Aries energy is going to get in the boxing ring, square off, fight it out, illuminate where the growing pains are with Pluto, the great transformer, who is retrograde and Capricorn energy. This is going to be the last aspect that the moon is going to be making before going void, of course, and shifting into that Taurus energy. So emotionally speaking, the moon getting into the boxing ring with Pluto, going to highlight a lot of fear, going to highlight a lot of doubt, okay? especially coming out of the Saturn Uranus interaction. We're starting to think about making moves. We're starting to think about trying new things. But for many of us, trying new things is a pretty scary thing to do. Why? Because many of us want to be per perfect at what we try right off the bat. And of course, practice makes perfect. And especially when you get older, you don't look like to to jump into new things. You like to be a master of all of the things that you've already tried, you've already put into practice. So there's a lot of, let's call it emotional limitation on where it is that we're now realizing that major changes are being made, whether we're ready for it or not. And where we were once bold, brave, courageous and ready to dive in now, we're second guessing. So the moon goes void, of course, we lock into that Taurus energy at 5.03 a.m. So you're definitely going to feel probably like you hit a little bit of a brick wall, a uh, little bit of a slow start to the day, if you will. And about 10 minutes later, we're going to have the moon in Taurus, semi-square Saturn. So this is not a huge growing pain, but now we're starting to be a little bit aware of how uncomfortable we actually are thinking about the changes that we know that we have to make. Okay, so again, we're very present. We're very connected to the to the here and now to our physical form. Saturn is opening up an opportunity for us to start planning and strategizing moves to be made moving forward. And that is a problem for the moon in Taurus because we don't want to think about the future. We don't want to think about the past. We just want to be in this present moment and we want to pluck the silver linings out of it. So this is definitely going to be not a positive vibe, just an awareness on where it is that we're going out of our way to avoid thinking about our future as far as the roles and responsibilities go, the accountability goes for taking action, making moves to further the elimination, the release, the purging process. The moon in Taurus is going to make a positive interaction with the sun in Virgo energy. This is earth on earth action. We love this. This is going to bring us back down to earth. It's going to illuminate for us again, what it is that we need to do in our present moment in the here and now to provide ourselves with a lot more, let's call it comfort, a lot more security, a lot more stability, a lot more reassurance that even though there are plans for the future that we don't have to do anything today, that's going to alleviate a lot of pressure from us that we don't even know that we're putting on ourselves. The moon is going to make an awkward interaction with Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, also in Virgo energy, his rulership. And so our heart space, the moon and our head space, they're not really on the same page, but they're definitely in the same book. They're on the same chapter. They're just not really up to snuff and up to speed, mostly because, again, the moon, emotionally speaking, and Taurus energy is trying to focus on all the good, all the positives, what makes us feel good, what makes us feel happy, what makes us feel just at peace with ourselves. And then Mercury over there in the Virgo energy, we're still picking things apart, still, you know, trying to critique our lives, still trying to illuminate where it is that we need to do better, where it is that we have to be better. And, you know, that comes with a little bit of pressure that the moon in Taurus is just not really about. We do have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure and money again in her rulership in Libra energy. She also rules over the moon now that it's in Taurus. She rules both Taurus and Libra. Venus is going to be making a very harsh interaction with Uranus, the great awakener, who, of course, is retrograde in Taurus energy. So, you know, Uranus is in 
Venus's other rulership at this particular juncture. And what we know is that when Mr. Uranus is involved, there's an element where we have to expect the unexpected. There's a major shift taking place, a jolt, if you will, of energy. And in this case, because Venus is involved, it's kind of affecting our heart space a little bit. So this is definitely going to put us in a little bit more of a jittery situation. We're overly anxious. We're trying to smile through it like everything's okay. But realistically, if we were a duck, everything's peace and calm above the water. And our little legs are just, you know, kicking for dear life underneath the water. Basically, this jitteriness is going to have us realizing where it is that we have a void to fill. And many of us may have impulsive spending habits or uh, blurred out certain thoughts, certain ideas, certain affections, if you will, that we really would, we will eventually wish we didn't. Um, a lot of fear comes up in relationships. A lot of jealousy could come up as well. We're starting to realize where it is that part of us really, really loves getting to know ourselves, honoring ourselves, doing whatever it is to make ourselves happy. We like that independence. We like that freedom. And then there's another part of us that, of course, really enjoys connection and intimacy. We're starting to question what we actually want from our relationships. And we're starting to realize that we actually have a little bit of a fear of commitment creeping up, even though a part of us wants more of a commitment, more of an attachment, if you will. And so we're kind of questioning ourselves, we're questioning our heart space, we're questioning our current relationship dynamics, but at the same time, we're not really prepared to declare, again, if you blurt it out on impulse, that's your own, that's your own issue. We're not really ready to declare big things. We're not ready to rock the boat. We're not ready to take action and make moves to, you know, kind of stir things up in the relationship dynamic. Again, with Venus and Libra energy, we just want everything to be in peace and harmony and balance. Everybody love, love, everybody get along when realistically there's something darker festering underneath the surface of our emotion. So Uranus, that jolt of energy, definitely going to bring out the insecurities that we're currently having, especially where certain people in our lives are involved. The moon is then going to semi-square, create a little bit of tension and conflict with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings, who happens to still be in this very divisive Gemini energy. We're trying to weigh the pros and cons. We're trying to expand the mental plane. We're trying to gain a little bit of momentum with our ideas, with our plannings, with our strategies. We have options. We have opportunities. We don't know what to do. We're hella on the fence about a lot. Now, normally Jupiter would bring a little bit of optimism, a little bit of confidence and magnify where we're plucking out the silver linings and moving forward. But this is a semi-square. This is highlighting where it is that we're having a little bit of an issue, a little bit of a growing pain, if you will. And a lot of this particular growing pain is of the fact that we get too overwhelmed trying to think about our options, trying to think about what is quote unquote right for us to choose, for us to do. And that moon in Taurus energy just wants us to be present, wants us to have the attitude of gratitude for where it is that we're at. Jupiter is so hung up on the bigger, greater, grander picture of where it is that we want to end up. Well, the Taurus energy is kind of helping us to appreciate how we actually get to that end goal, right? So a lot of people say, you know, it's not the destination, it's the journey on how you get there. And this is very much a good example to use for this particular energy. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with the north node in Aries energy, which is a funny kind of twist because the north node is trying to get us on the right path, trying to get us independent, trying to get us to know thyself, trying to get us, you know, in alignment with a new chapter, new mission, new goal, new dream, trying to highlight where we have to grow, where we have to heal, where we have to do better, where we have to improve. Very futuristic, if I do say so myself. However, the moon in this Taurus energy is at least giving us permission to not have to physically take action and make moves on the realizations that we're now having about our futuristic plans, our strategy, our thoughts, our ideas on how to actually get there. So when we give ourselves a little bit of a permission, a little bit of a, a break, if you will, to just kind of visualize what could be from an exciting point of view of imagining without any real roles and responsibilities attached to it, 
suddenly we're a little bit more inclined to think about where it is that we would like to go from here. The sun in Virgo energy going to sit directly across from oppose Neptune, who happens to be in his rulership in Pisces energy, but of course he is retrograde. So this is basically the annual opposition between the sun and Neptune. And because they're at the later degrees, obviously the sun is at the later degrees of Virgo energy as well. And again, reminder, Virgo and Pisces sit across from each other in the zodiac wheel and represent the axis of healing. The sun in Virgo energy is our, of course, life force energy of what we need to pour our time, energy and focus on, especially where we could do better, where we can make improvements, where we can fix and grow and heal some of the physical circumstances in our present moment in our here and now. Neptune, on the other hand, because he's retrograde, we do have to deal with life as it is at the moment, not for the way that we wished it would be. And what happens is, is that we have to strike a balance between our dreamland and our reality. So this is very much playing into the full moon Pisces and Virgo axis that we just had. Um, a lot of the same topics and themes are coming up for review. But basically what this does is it kind of makes us confused, confused on our path, on our direction, on our truth, on our mission, on our inspirations, on our passions, like we just lose any type of direction that we even had to begin with. And it doesn't feel good to be low on willpower and low on wah, wah, kind of whiny and victimized. Poor woe is me, we're so confused. Our perceptions are definitely off. There is a layer of confusion. May I remind you, we're in eclipse season. We're eclipsed from the reality. We're eclipsed from the path moving forward. We're eclipsed from the clarity that we want right now. And this sun opposing Neptune is definitely going to shine a bright light on how directionless, how confused, how quote unquote lost we actually feel. The last thing that we have going on here today, the moon and Taurus going to sextile beautiful interaction with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger, who happens to be in cancer energy. So we have Taurus energy, a fixed earth sign. We have cancer energy, a cardinal water sign. We love earth and water working together because that's how we grow. That's how we cleanse ourselves. That's how we purify. That's how we rejuvenate, regenerate, and how we grow. So Here's the thing. The moon in Taurus, again, wants to stay in the present moment, wants to be happy, wants to be comfortable, wants to feel safe and secure and stable with no pressure added upon us to make changes, to make improvements, to totally change and transform the physical realm. We have cancer energy who's actually more focused on trying to preserve what it is that we've already built and created let alone trying to think about the future. Yes, we can come as far into the present moment as realizing the moves, the options, the opportunities that we have available to us to further make us feel safe and secure, especially in our emotional realm, especially protecting what it is that we've built and created, especially defending what is most important to us. That is very much on the same level as where it is that we're at emotionally. We're looking for that stability. We're looking for comfort. We're looking for tried, tested, and true. And the Taurus energy and the Cancer energy definitely have that similar vibe. Emotionally with Mars, we're starting to really, I'm going to say, lean into the comfort, lean into the stability, lean into realizing what it is that we could be doing for ourselves in the present moment here and now to support our comfort, to make ourselves happier, to make ourselves feel a little bit more safe, a little bit more secure, and release the pressure that we've been putting on ourselves to figure everything out now and just live in the moment and have a little bit of a different mood and attitude of gratitude for how it is that we've actually gotten here. <laughs>